Hey everyone. In the previous video, we divided the uh, the graph into two communities using brute force approach. Uh, brute force approach means we di we tried all possible divisions of nodes into two communities, uh, which was a very time consuming process. So if the graph is very huge, it's going to take a whole lot of time. And in case of very high, uh, you know large graphs, it might not even uh, run. It might get stuck. So that was not a feasible uh, way to find the communities in a given graph. On the other hand, we have this algorithm which is called Girvan Newman algorithm, and this algorithm is basically uh, uh, based on the concept of uh, edge betweenness. Now, the the key idea is that the edges which are intercommunity, that is, uh, the edges which are uh, which are you know. Um, linking the nodes from one community to the other community they tend to have a high uh, value of betweenness uh, now that means that a uh, number of uh, shortest paths pass through these edges so if, if we are able to find the edge betweenness of uh, these edges and we keep removing them uh, we we tend to get the community structure of the graph so this is the whole idea behind uh, this algorithm and this is what we are going to implement and after that we'll <coughs> we'll try this uh, algorithm on uh, uh, the sample graph that we took in the previous video that is uh, babel graph and after that we'll also execute uh, this algorithm uh, this algorithm on Zikari Karate Club as well and we'll see the communities that get formed. So let's get started. So I'm going to import this package import network x as nx and let's create a function for Girvan algorithm. So I'll write Girvan g and okay. So let's first of all check whether the graph is connected or not. So I'll write nx dot connected. I'm sorry, connected component. Oh, I'm sorry, component uh, subgraphs. G. So uh, what this function does? Connected component subgraphs. This function uh, returns the connected component of the graph as subgraphs. Uh, so if there are two connected components in the graph G, it will return two subgraphs. If there is only one connected component, that is the graph is connected, it is going to return only one subgraph and that is the graph itself. So let's store that in uh, this uh, uh, list C. Uh, so if the length of this list is one, that means the graph is connected, right? Because it returned only one connected component. And if the list, if the length of this list is more than one, that means the graph is disconnected and there are more than one connected components, right? So uh, let's store the length of uh, this list C and let's print that uh, because we are going to keep checking whether the graph is now connected or not. So we are going to make use of this function again. And just to keep track of the algorithm, we are going to print, uh, print whether the graph is connected or not at that particular moment. So I'm going to print the number of connected components R. Okay. <clears throat> so I write L. So L is the number of connected components. So initially it will be one if the graph is connected, of course. Okay. Now, as I told you, we will keep removing the edges from this graph G. Okay. So the function that we'll use to remove the edges uh, from the graph is g dot remove edge okay and as a parameter we will pass the edge that has to be removed basically we'll pass two parameters first is the source of the edge and the second is the target of the edge that has to be removed now the big question is which edge to remove right as i told you we are going to remove the edges <clears throat> based on the betweenness uh, value so we have to calculate the betweenness value of the edges first and now since we have to keep removing the edges i am going to keep that code in a function so uh, let me better create a function here i'll create a function say edge to remove and i'll pass the graph g here so let's first create this function edge to remove okay and let's pass the graph here 
okay h to remove now in order to be uh, able to know which h to remove we have to first calculate the h betweenness values and for that we have a function nx dot h betweenness centrality or of g so so edge between a centrality is a function in network x which returns a dictionary of values so i'm going to name it like dict1 so that you know the data structure of the returned value so uh, what does this dictionary contain this dictionary contains as a key the edge and as a value it contains the edge between a centrality of that edge correct so that is what this dictionary contains now what is our aim our aim is, is to sort the edges based on their between a centrality value so since dictionary doesn't keep track of the sorted uh, elements basically there is no association between the uh, element and the index so the elements can appear in any order so order is not a uh, thing of a dictionary so let's take the values from this dictionary and keep them in the form of a list so what i'll do is i'll write dict1 dot items and i'll store uh, these in the form of a list of tuples i'm going uh, to give uh, a similar name to it so that you, it is easier for you list of tuples is equal to dict1 dot items so you might be knowing that this items function basically returns the tuples of the dictionary uh, where the first element of each tuple is the key and second ele element of each tuple is the value so this list is going to have tuples where the first element will be the edge for each tuple and the second element of each tuple is going to be the edge between us value now it makes sense for us to sort this list as we know sort this list based on the edge between us value right now how do we do that let me show you list of tuples dot sort this is the function that we will use to sort this list now uh the list is having tuples and tuples have two values second value is the edge between us value and based on that only we have to sort the list so whenever we have to sort a list of tuples there is a syntax that we follow let me show you that so key is equal to lambda x colon x1 now let me tell you why i write x colon x1 um and one more thing reverse is equal to true so this is how we sort a list of tuples you can see the documentation of this uh, lambda keyword uh, so this is basically a shortcut to sort a list based on uh, either you know first value of the tuple or the second value of the tuple so here we want to sort based on the second value of the tuple so i'm writing x colon x1 in case you want to sort the uh, list based on the first value of the tuple you'll write x colon x0 second thing is we want uh, in the descending order that is we want the the edge which has the highest between us to be on the top so i'll write reverse is equal to true in case you want the opposite you don't need to write anything here okay so we have now the list which is sorted so the first element of the list is the is the tuple uh, where uh, the first element of the tuple is the edge and second element of the tuple is the between us value what do we have to return uh, here by this function this function should return the edge right so what we are going to return is list of tuples first i'm sorry first element uh, first uh, tuples first element which is zero zero because the index starts from zero i hope i'm clear here uh, zeroth element means zeroth tuple and in that tuple zeroth element which is the first element that is the edge so we are going to return this all right i'm sorry return this so all right we know which edge to remove now there's one catch here which should be noted this edge to remove is going to return uh is going to return a tuple right uh, let me write here uh, as a comment it's going to return uh, the edge which is of the form a comma b where a is the source and b is the target okay so when we pass it here 
when we pass it here it becomes like this a comma b right this becomes uh, this comes over here instead of this which which is uh, which give which will give you a syntax error so what is needed is we instead of this we we want this thing a comma b i'm sorry a comma b basically out of the tuple we have to extract the edge so what we can put here is star when you write star here we get the content of the tuple and not the tuple okay so we now we got the edge which has to be removed after we remove the edge from the graph we again have to check whether the graph is connected or not right so again we will make use of this uh, function and again we'll find the length and again we may print whether uh, the as in uh, what are the number of connected components so i'm going to uh, use it here we have to keep removing the edges until the graph becomes disconnected so which means we have to start a while loop here so i'll write while l is equal to 1 which means as long as the graph is connected keep doing this okay and as soon as this l becomes 2 right l becomes 2 means the graph becomes disconnected and the number of connected components in the graph is 2 the uh, the control will come out of this loop and here we have two connected components correct so and these two connected components are there in this list c which is what uh, uh, we are going to return here so we'll write return c so we are going to return this c and uh, we'll we'll see in uh, while we're calling it we'll see how how we can extract the connected components out of this c okay so i think we are done with the functions let's try to make use of them let's take uh, the example graph that we took in the previous video um, nx dot bubble graph with the same values that I'll, I'll take as of now 5 comma 0 and i'll pass them in this function and let me take the returned values now c is going to have the two uh, connected components right uh, so and these two connected components in the form of a graph which means we can apply all the functions of graph on these connected components because they are actually uh, graph objects so i can start a loop here or i can uh, manually do that as well so i'll write for i in c so c was a list which has two elements so i'll write for i in c um, uh, let me so what is our aim our aim is to print the nodes which are falling in the first community and in the second community community means connected components here right so <clears throat> let's print i uh, because i is a graph i can use i dot nodes and that's all so i goes from 0 to 1 and uh, both the connected components nodes will be printed here uh, let me put some separator here something as in anything okay so we should get the uh, two connected comp the nodes of the two connected components by this let's see okay let's check uh, the program uh, what was the name yeah okay right uh, so you see the number of connected components initially was one and then we removed uh, some uh, edge and <clears throat> the number of connected components became two so it was a very small graph so quickly it converged as you, you see uh, how quickly it converged um, as compared to the brute force method in that method we uh, it, it took a, a good amount of iterations to finally uh, give us the communities here it it's it's quickly given us uh, the communities and as we saw in the previous video uh, the communities were 0 1 2 3 4 in the first one and eight nine five six seven the second uh, community so it's giving us uh, correctly the communities in the given graph let's go back uh, to our code and we can also check the karate clubs uh, communities here okay so let's check this code for the zikari karate club as well um let me copy paste this and let me comment this okay so let's take zakari karate club so this is the function that uh, uh, we can use 
karate club graph uh let me tell you you can also uh, follow another method to get the zakari karate club in the graph object which i think we used in the previous videos uh you if you have the karate.gml or <coughs> karate uh, club graph in any any format you can just read that uh, uh graph file and then that's how you can you know convert that into graph object so you can use that or you can use this inbuilt function which is given by a network x okay so we are going to run this uh, again on this uh, graph let's see now nah, let me let's let me show you okay so you see the number of connected components initially was one and then it removed some good number of edges based on the betweenness until it reached to the uh, two connected components uh, part and this is these are the nodes in the first community and these are the nodes in the second community and yeah i think these are the com uh, these are the nodes which actually constitute the two communities in the karate club uh, network you can also verify uh, you, you can google and you can see the communities that were actually formed in the karate club network so this girvan newman is uh, doing a good job of giving the communities here you can also see the number of nodes if you want to print uh, the number of nodes in each community let's do that i dot so as i told you this is i is a graph so you can uh, you know use any uh, graph function here number of nodes this should work um, so i want to uh, see the number of nodes in each community so there are 19 and 15 uh i think if i'm not wrong uh there were 16 or 18 or something but but nevertheless this is uh, uh this is a pretty good approximation of finding the communities in the given graph uh 